Welcome everyone to Ratioed. My name is Harrison Faulkner. Something big has happened to me this week, guys. Something very big. I've had a whole new outlook on life, a whole new shift in perspective. You see, I used to think that returning to normal was a normal thing. Wanting to get back to the life we all lived before the pandemic was something that we all wanted, right? It was not political, it was not divisive. It turns out, however, that in the expert opinion of a very smart, very serious MD, PhD, who also wears a mask on TV, it turns out that wanting to return to normal is far right and ableist. Who knew? I certainly didn't, and now we both do. Also on the show, in a stunning act of bravery, in a stunning display of political solidarity with workers, the Ontario NDP have launched into a hunger strike. And it's not really a real hunger strike. It's just more one of those classic NDP political stunts that does nothing. However, when I was reading this story earlier on in the day, I stumbled upon something that made me think for just a second, have the NDP pulled off a hilarious political joke on Ontario's Premier Doug Ford. You let me know, we'll get into that later on the show and I wanna hear what you have to say about it. And we wrap up the show as we always do with the Ratio of the Week Award, the only award given out to those in the Canadian political and media space that show true determination, that, that exemplify what it means to show real grit and passion. You know the award doesn't go to anyone who doesn't deserve it and this week it is certainly going to a deserving winner, but you'll have to watch the show to find out. Now, Drop a like on this video, and here is your common question for the show. Under what circumstances would you be seen wearing one of those giant N95 masks in public? You know the ones I'm talking about, like those bird beak looking masks. Under what circumstances would you be seen wearing one of those in public? I'm only looking for the wrong answers, so I wanna see what you guys have to say. Let me know what circumstances you'd be seen wearing one of those hideous masks. And if you like what we're doing at True North and you wanna help us out, Help us help you by donating to us at donate.tnc.news. The link is in the description of this video. All right, let's get into it. Now, like I said at the top of this, I hope none of you are looking to return to normal. You better not be wanting to get back to life the way it used to be before 2020. Because if you do, you're actually pushing far right talking points. You're ableist and you're whatever else the radical left wanna throw at you. I'm not joking. The clip I'm about to show you is insane. It's going viral right now. Everyone is making fun of it and making fun of this lady for saying these insane things. What a surprise, guys. We have another TV doctor masked up telling us that we need to keep our lockdowns going. We need to keep our restrictions longer. Now, before we get into these viral clips and break it down, some context is required. The woman with the mask on talking is Nilly Kaplan Mirth. She's a doctor and she's appeared on Legacy Media many times advocating for lockdowns. She is 100% on the side of the COVID zealots. Nilly Kaplan Mirth is also a candidate for the Ottawa District School Board. So she's running to be a school board trustee in Ottawa. Now, with all that out of the way, watch this insane clip. I want to start, uh, okay, Ottawa, let's start with you. It's become clear that the message from the provincial government is we're all getting back to normal now, folks. So let's start there. Are we back to normal yet? No. So the language that you use when you say something like uh, normal is a far right um, language of anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers and ableists who uh, disregard the impact of COVID on on seniors, on children, on educators, on essential workers, on healthcare workers, on our healthcare crisis. Uh, there's nothing normal about getting COVID, repeated infections, children and adults being hospitalized and long COVID. There's nothing normal about taking away the protections and the proactive measures that we had to help to reduce transmission of COVID. And there's nothing normal about uh, getting rid of any kind of isolation requirements, which would have helped to curtail outbreaks in schools, in workplaces and everywhere else that you go. So there you have it, guys. There's nothing normal about getting rid of isolation requirements. There's nothing normal about getting rid of COVID says the woman wearing a mask on her own in her own office. How very normal of Nilly to say that wanting to return to normal is far right, anti-mask, anti-vax language. Far right talking points, guys. So that all begs the question then, doesn't it? If wanting to return to normal is far right, if it's the language of the anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers, as she says, and it's, and it's the language of ableist people, then I guess we're never going to return to normal if these people had their way. Keep this in mind if you happen to be living in Ottawa, folks. But you see on today's show, it's not just a one-punch knockout from Nilly here. It's a one-two punch combo. There's a second clip to go with it. Another one going viral because the first one wasn't crazy enough. Check out what she has to say later on in the program 
about wearing masks. We have the tools to use. We know what we can use. We have masks and they should be N95 masks. We should be using HEPA filters. We should be improving ventilation. We should be providing adequate paid sick days and encouraging people to stay home when they're sick rather than returning to workplaces. We have all of those tools. They are achievable. They are low cost. They are effective. It is inappropriate to say that masks are some form of harm hardship. They are not. They are not cruelty, Matt. They are not in any way restricting people's ability to make friends, to play, to work, to do any of the things. In fact, there are places in the world where even, uh, for example, in Italy, opera singers are on stage wearing masks. There is nothing that you are saying that that is based in science or medicine. What you are saying is based in right-wing, anti-mask, anti-vax ideology. I think I'm starting to get it, right? Anything that could possibly cast shade on their religious-like loyalty to masks and mandates, anything that could possibly call that into question is a far-right anti-mask talking point. This feels like I'm kind of getting it here. Also, can't you guys see? It's clearly normal. Masks are normal because in Italy, opera singers are wearing masks. Because of that, we should all be wearing masks too. I wouldn't want to be offside medically with the great Italian opera singers, especially given how healthy they are too. In my opinion, we can make fun of Nilly's comments, we can laugh at her, and believe me, there's plenty of that going on on Twitter right now. Just search up her name, you'll have a good chuckle. But here's the bigger overarching point. Please, please, please. Wherever you are, if you're in a rural municipality, or if you're in downtown Toronto, or if you happen to be in Ottawa, make sure you know who's running for your local municipal elections. These rules matter. Your city councillor matters. They have a real important voice in your day-to-day -day life. And even more so, in my opinion, are the school board trustees. In Ottawa, Nilly has made her point very clear. If you want your child to return to a normal educational experience like you had as a parent, well, that's far right. The Nilly clip goes on, and it's actually very important context to know how serious are these people? Are they just making political talking points? Or are they legitimately true believers in what they say? Steve Pakin asks Nilly why she's wearing a mask in the interview. She responds by saying, the masks are very important, the science is clear, blah, 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 and that I just had patients in my doctor's office and COVID is airborne. So COVID is airborne, she wears a mask every time she's in that particular office, when she steps in and when she leaves. That's what she says, watch this clip course of COVID-19, and I don't think we've ever had a guest who kept their mask on during the interview. So again, with, w without yeah. prejudice, I merely ask, how come you're wearing yours now? So let me explain. So I'm a doctor. I'm a family doctor. I see patients in my office. I just had patients who are in my office with their babies, and I have more patients coming in this afternoon. COVID is airborne. That means that COVID remains in the air even after you've left the room. I keep my mask on. It is a way to protect myself. It's a way to protect my patients. It's a way to protect my staff and the community. It is what healthcare providers across the world are saying that we should be doing. And it's really not a hardship. I wear my mask from the moment that I arrive in my office in the morning until the end of the day. Oh, Nilly wears her mask in the office in the morning until she leaves at the end of the day. Well, she sounds really believable there, doesn't she, guys? She sounds like she's really telling us the truth. There's a problem with that. You see, when things go up on the internet, they never come down. They're there forever. And that's a problem for Nilly's comments because at some point, she decided to break her own commitment when doing an interview on the CBC in her exact same office. Look at this. This is her face free with her beautiful smile for us all to see. Nilly, just smile for us. You don't need to wear a mask on TV. We want to see that beautiful smile of yours. Here it is. She was wearing a mask in her, in her doctor's office where COVID is airborne and it lives in the air and it's so scary. Well, she obviously wasn't too scared to go mask free with the CBC. And some people are saying, well, that was before Nilly kaplan Mirth decided to run for school board trustee. Very interesting. There she is in her doctor's office, mask-free, in all of her glory. I don't know, you guys, you tell me. I think Nilly is far better without the mask, right? I think, like everyone, Nilly is far better without the mask. We all wanna see you smile without the mask. She's not smiling in this photo with the Ottawa Citizen, but there she is once again without her mask on in her office. Or how about this one with Global News? In an interview with Global News, exhausted and scared, Canada's doctors call for help to stop online hate. 
without a mask. So the agenda, the TVO channel on Twitter posted these clips of the show and they're getting hundreds of thousands of views. Of course, the mockery is off the charts on these videos and as it should be, in my opinion. The comments are hilarious. I like this one. Alert, alert, the Zuma virus is coming to get us. Wear your mask on Zoom. <laughs> And this person writes, nice touch with a stethoscope around your neck. You see, it's all very well done up. It's all a good little uniform, a good little act. I'm sure she's a real doctor, not saying that. But we know, guys. We've seen these videos. We've seen these TV doctors do their thing. They, they go on TV with their masks on and their scrubs. And they look all really serious. That's what this is really all about. And then this person actually writes a very detailed response as to why these mask mandates are harmful for kids. We've seen the arguments. I'm not the one making them. These have been made by countless doctors online. You can find them anywhere you want. But here's the point. Babies learn speech by watching and mimicking lip movement of those around them. I have zero doubt that millions of good intentioned but wrongly informed parents wear masks around their babies. Soon we'll start seeing reports on high numbers of kids with speech impediments. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. That is obviously an unintended consequence of all of this. You know, sometimes I read certain things and I just think to myself, has this been written just for this show, just for ratio? Has it been set up just so that we can make fun of it on this program? Because like I said, some things you read are so stupid, so crazy, ridiculous that, you know, like with Fake News Friday, there's some stuff that's just tailor-made for that show. I read this and I thought, this deserves to be mocked on ratioed for sure. So check this headline out. This is from City News. NDP MPPs are going on temporary social assistance diet. So what's going on here is that in a stunning act of political bravery and a stunning display, as I said at the top, of political solidarity with workers, a few Ontario NDP MPPs, these are provincial parliamentarians in Ontario, they have decided that for two weeks, a total of two weeks, my God, they're going to go on what they call a social assistance diet. Now this basically means they're spending only $47.60 a week on groceries to assist in their calls to increase the Ontario Disability Support Program and Ontario Works Rates. And some of the quotes in this article are ridiculous. So one of the women who's doing this social assistance diet says they're going to extreme extents here. Quote, we're going to extreme extents here, we think, to highlight people's stories, to be able to raise the focus on what is actual people's reality. We're using our privileges, MPPs, to amplify the voices of those who are simply not heard or not listened to often enough. So my first thought was, nah, this is just some stupid, classic little Ontario political stunt. This sort of lefty political stunt to try and, you know, make themselves a story and only somewhat do anything to move the dial. Obviously, they know nothing's going to happen. They're just kind of doing it for political clout and to get attention. And then I read further. And when I read this next paragraph, I thought to myself, well, hold on just a minute here. Maybe this is all just a big stunt, a big political joke that they're putting on to have a good laugh at Doug Ford. The five NDP MPPs are calling on Premier Doug Ford and Social Services Minister Mary Lee Fullerton to join them in the two-week diet. Now, I don't want to give too much comedic credit to the NDP here. I don't think they're that clever to come up with a good little jab. But if they were looking to make a funny joke about the Premier, this would certainly be it. Hey, here, join us, Doug Ford, on a $47 a week grocery diet. Join us on our somewhat food strike to protest the ODSP social services. Now, perhaps when the NDP were thinking of inviting Marilee Fullerton and Doug Ford to join them on their diet, the intention was different for Fullerton than it was for Ford. Perhaps they're looking out for Ford in more ways than one. They want, hey, you know, they think this would be a good political initiative for Ford, but it might also not be a bad health initiative either for him. You know, join us on this diet, kill two birds with one stone, drop a few pounds, and pick up a few votes perhaps from the radical left. Maybe that's what they were thinking, I don't know. Is that teamwork? You looking at my gut? No. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, I just took a little peek. I saw you. So what are you looking at my gut for? Oh, I'm just with you. What can I do with it? Who knows? Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this story. I thought, hey, that's a funny little line that uh, maybe people will pick it up. Maybe they won't. But let me know in the comments. Do you really think the NDP expect the Premier to join them on their food diet? Or do you think they're looking out for them in, uh, in a different way? Here we go. Ratio of the week time, everyone. We've made it to the end of the show. Now, I've, I've had a thought about the award, the ratio of the week award, what it means. And I, I've come to realize, you know, unlike the awards that lefties hand out, this is no participation prize. Let me tell you. The Ratio of the Week Award is hotly contested week in and week out. It's the one award that truly exemplifies the real definition of grit, determination, 
and skill. You have to be skillful to win this award. And the winner this week is Jean-Yves Duclos, the health minister for Canada, Justin Trudeau's health minister. And it's not just the tweet. And of course, the tweet itself is what you base the award off. But if you put in a real hard shift in the week and, and you you make it clear you want to win the award, you want to be ratioed by the people, you want the public to make fun of you, well, well then, you know you're gonna win on you're gonna win on the show. So it's not just the tweet that Jean-Yves Duclos is winning the award for this week. It's his entire week's work. He put in an effort. He put in a shift all week. So it starts off with this tweet. He fired this great one off on September 1st. He writes, with fall around the corner, Canada adds a significant addition to our arsenal in the fight to end COVID-19. As of today, the first variant targeting vaccine against Omicron, Moderna's spike vax bivalent is now authorized as a booster dose for adults 18 plus. Yay, just what we wanted, guys. Didn't we all, weren't we all asking for this booster shot? We were all saying, this is what we need. We need it to help us end the fight against COVID-19. So, Johnny Duclos, thank you so much. You're doing what Canada wants, and this is exactly what we need. And, and for this tweet, he got 615 comments to 285 likes. You'd think, though, that if it's really what's going to end the fight against COVID-19, you could get more than 285 likes, surely. Right? That's That's... Cause for celebration. But I guess when you are Jean-Yves Duclos, you learn not to expect too much. But before we go to the comments on the tweet, I want to show you what else Jean-Yves Duclos did this week. Why, the other reason why he's winning the award, because like I said, it's not just the tweet. He put in a real hard shift this week, guys. Here's what else he had to say. A uh, national uh, campaign will start next week. The, uh, the, the, the title is Protection Wayne's action is required just like a phone battery your phone battery you no know, wanes you no know, needs to be recharged for your thanks for your phone to work to have appropriate power to operate and for your vaccination protection to be effective so you recharge your phone battery by you know, plugging it to the, the electricity you recharge your vaccine protection by taking action and getting uh, vaccination you know, protection. So that's going to start next week. So it's just like your phone battery. You know, if you don't charge your phone, you won't be able to use it. No calling, no texting for you if you don't charge your phone. So maybe that's what they're getting at. It's just like your phone. Take the booster. Otherwise, you won't be able to do anything else. Maybe. Or that's just what they're talking about with the protection. But it, nonetheless, he put that out there and got ruthlessly mocked for that as well. So you combine the ridiculous tweet and then you combine the the booster dose is just like recharging your phone. What do you get? Well, you get the perfect mix. And that, of course, all results in winning the most coveted prize in all of Ottawa, the Ratio of the Week Award. Jean-Yves, congratulations, my friend. Winner, Gagnon. This person wrote, is the comms team at Moderna now writing your tweets? <laughs> this person, that's going to be a hard pass. Had Omicron twice, it's a cold. And this person here, just go away already. It's over, buddy. It's over, Jean-Yves. It's time to hang it up, man. We're done. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Let's see what next week brings. Let's see if it tops the level of craziness we're seeing every single week. We'll have to get to it on next Thursday's show. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.